Okay, hi everyone, it's Victoria Logley Without Properties and I am live. Um, just want to be sure everything's working and I think it is. So I am often asked by my clients what they need to do to prepare their home to get it on the market. And so I'm gonna go through some information on how you can get your house market ready um, paint colors, uh, everything from decluttering to design info. And I'm just gonna pretend like you're my, my clients. I'm gonna pretend like you're all my clients. And hello, everyone. Hi. Oh, this is so exciting. It's my first time doing this. Uh, okay. So basically, you want to get your house on the market. I think it's a good idea to start a couple months in advance, uh, especially if you have a family and kids and craziness going on, because it can take some time to do this. I've had people do it in as little as a couple weeks, but usually it takes a couple of months. So to get your house ready, I would say you really, it's important, first of all, obviously to, if you can try and, uh, you know, have a real a local realtor come in and give you their opinion and or a stager or someone, even a friend that has an eye to be, you have to be completely, um, you know, you have to come into the, into the house and, 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 and not sort of come in as your own self and come in as a buyer. And what do you see as a buyer, right? We want to neutralize as much as possible. And I think the biggest things that we can do, the biggest, biggest thing, number one is declutter. We all have clutter. I have clutter. Even though I'm a minimalist and I hate clutter, I have clutter. Everyone does. And that's okay, right? Everybody has clutter. It's really not that big of a deal. But I say like declutter and that's sort of the biggest hurdle people, uh, people have. Um, you know, removing personal pictures. And I would say like getting rid of half of everything that's in your closet um, is really important because, you know, when people open up closets, you don't want this stuff to come down on top of them and we all have too much stuff. So removing like off season clothing is huge right there in and of itself. Put all this stuff, pack it away nicely, put it on the corner of your garage or in a corner of your basement in a utility room or something like that, but don't block the utility room because blocking utility rooms is not good. Hello everyone. Hi. Oh, look at this. I have so many people. Thank you so much for joining. So anyway, um, decluttering is the biggest thing. Depersonalizing, removing all your personal photos. Um, because if a buyer walks in the house, they can't picture themselves there if they're looking at your family or if they don't look like your family, if they don't resemble anything like your family. And then they're like, mm, but I don't, you know, it just sort of all of this stuff is, is, um, are, are things that, that just can play an impact on a buyer's sense and feeling of a house because we can all try and be, you know, you know, very um, methodical when we're trying to go see a house and say, okay, I need a bedroom, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, you know, two car garage. But then it's really a feeling when you go in, if you get the vibe, if you get the good jive, that's when they're going to make an offer, right? And the best way to do that is to neutralize it and take away, you know, most of your personal personal items. The other thing is any religion or artifacts is really important to sort of tuck away. No disrespect. I know that, you know, people sometimes get a little upset by that. But again, if the person coming in, the buyers coming in and taking a look is, um, are different religions, then that's not going to go over very well. So I would say, you know, tuck all those things away. Um, and then another super important thing is, let me just see here. I'll look at my notes. Okay. Fix the little things, little loose door handles. Um, you know, I, I know it annoys me, but like my little toilet paper roll uh, holder is a little and like cocky, right? Like fix all that stuff. So someone is, 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 you know, opening up a door. We don't want anything to fall on top of them or, or light bulbs is huge. Any burnt out light bulbs, please replace them and replace them all with the same warmth, cold or warm. Pick one. Don't mix them together. That is no bueno. That is not good. We want one type of light bulb and replace the ones that are burnt out. Very important. Um, so let's see here. Uh, so fix the little things, super important. And then I would say as far as like from a design, you know, I, I never want people to spend money needlessly because I, I hate for people to spend money when they're going to sell their house. But sometimes it's imperative to spend a little bit of money to get that much more return on your investment, right? Because at this point, we're looking at it as an ROI. Okay, I spent five grand on paint, but I'm going to be able to sell it for this much more or this much faster than if I, you know, just left it every shade of Tuscan, as I always say, right? The greens and the golds and the burgundies. Those are not so in right now, right? So it's really important to neutralize. Um, I have some favorite paint colors that I'm going to share with you guys and wall colors. So I'd say my go-tos are, and I even have samples here, for wall color, my favorite gray beige is Balboa Mist. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's Benjamin Moore. All of these are Benjamin Moore. It's Balboa Mist. 
And I like this color because it goes nicely with warm tones, warm, you know, flooring, but then also makes trim pop. So white trim will still pop with this Balboa Mist color. In fact, I have it in quite a few rooms of my house. This is the gray beige, which I know they're saying is, you know, slowly making its way out of fashion right now. Another one that um, a lot of people are talking about are whites. Whites are all the rage. I know me personally with four kids and two dogs, if I had white walls, they would be trashed in two seconds. But um, I still nonetheless think it's it's worth it if, you, if you're willing to keep up with it with your little scrubber magic erase, you know, doohickey thingies. So um, there are some white wall colors that are really pretty. Weathered white is a warmer white and that is a very beautiful white. I've got chalk white here that is really pretty. Um, so you have to be careful um, to notice what wall colors you have because if they're warmer wall colors or warmer trim you want to pick a warmer white if you have cooler colors and you want to pick a cooler white um, and you can always um, ask a designer or a realtor for their opinion or a friend that's good with color and design sometimes even if you go to Benjamin Moore store they can help you or Epco or even your painter my painter Scotty he's awesome he's got a great eye for color so I always ask his opinion on things as well uh, and then I always still like the classic gray. I know they're saying it's out, but I still like the classic gray. The lighter gray beige colors are really my favorite. So if you're not ready to, to embrace a white wall, I would say still go for those neutral light gray beige colors. Um, nothing that's too yellow and nothing that's too blue or chalky. I also love a pop of color on an island. So if you're thinking of spraying your cabinets, which also gives you a huge return on your investment, I like the color etiquette which is again, a warmer white and silver satin. Those are Benjamin Moore colors for cabinets. Cabinets will give you a huge return on your investment. If you have burgundy cabinets or cabinets that are oak, you know, turning orangey, nobody likes that. I know wood is in right now, but it's a very specific color, neutral walnut wood, not burgundy wood, not orange yellow wood, right? So if you're not sure, having someone professionally spray your uh, cabinets, it can make a huge difference. So my favorites again, for cabinets are etiquette and silver satin is stunning. I just did one of my listings, um, 2750 Central with silver satin and it's a, a cooler, a cooler white and it's gorgeous. Um, and then I always love a contrasting island. My favorites for contrasting islands, believe it or not, are super dark. My absolute favorite, which is Iron Mountain, super dark charcoal. It's gorgeous. This is what my island is actually um, painted. Uh, just did a friends in hail navy so it's a navy blue i know blue is all the rage too so this is stunning he did his dining room actually in hail navy and then we did his island in the hail navy as a pop of color with the white quartzite counters it turned out absolutely gorgeous i know they're showing greens i think that's a little bit of a risk if someone hates the color green and you paint your island green i just feel like you could be potentially making a huge um, hi, Brian, Justin, nice to see you. Um, you know, uh, you could be making a huge mistake by painting your island green. Uh, you know, sometimes we find on the coast, the west coast and the east coast, the design is adapted and adopted much faster than here in the Midwest. It takes longer. Uh, we, we're still stuck in the white cabinet, you know, scenario and we're not doing anything really green and crazy yet. Maybe in the super, super high end, but for just regular old middle of the road folks, you know, painting your island or painting your uh, cabinets some sort of white color with a, a contrasting neutral island is a great idea. And then, um, so those are pink colors. Let's see, what else can I talk about? Uh, home improvements. What can we do to improve our home besides paint and decluttering? What are the best things to do to improve your return on your investment for your home when you go to sell? Obviously, paint is the hugest thing. The second thing I would say is updating your lighting and your light fixtures. It's not that expensive now. You can go to Home Depot and Lowe's. I like buying stuff on Amazon and Overstock and updating uh, your lighting so that it's more modern and um, it, it can really change an entire room. And again, for like a hundred bucks, you can change out your whole chandelier to a gorgeous linen, simple uh, drum shade or, or island lights and pendants. I mean, that can make all the difference in the world. And for a few hundred dollar investment, it's huge return. Return. It's, your, it's a very, very big return. Um, so I would say lighting. So island lights, dining room lights, really big dining room chandelier and like maybe an entrance chandelier as well. Uh, the other thing I would say that's really impactful and doesn't cost anything is removing heavy dated curtains. Remove curtains and valances. Um, unless they're white, crisp, or maybe a dark neutral gray or black. Those can be really in right now. But no patterns, um, nothing super heavy. 
uh, I think it's best not to have anything on the windows, believe it or not. And people have asked, oh, really? Nothing on the windows? Well, yes, just make sure the windows are clean and you can see out and, and then that can just make the room. One caveat, if by chance you have a view that's not so desirable, like your neighbor's right on top of you or uh, you're looking out into, uh, I have a client right now that unfortunately they're looking out into like a parking lot of, of, um, uh, of the, of the car wash, right? When you go into the home and, and, and all you look out the window and that's what you see, that's not so pretty. So I would invest in some very inexpensive, again, Home Depot and Lowe's is great resource, three day blinds, some blinds, some simple honeycomb blinds, not the vinyl ones, not the aluminum ones, not those cheapy um, vertical ones, right? Those are not good. Just regular honeycomb white blinds or a warm white if you have a warmer white trim around your window. So something that kind of matches your window. No colors, neutral white. And then have it come down three quarters to midway just so you don't see the view of the ugly car wash behind you, right? Or if you have a top down, bottom up, that's always a good idea too. Uh, so that can be a huge difference in selling your property. I've had I've had houses that I've had and I've been the second and third agent in and they're not able to sell their property. I'm like, yeah, that's because when you stare out the dining room, you stare at the school across the street. Like who the heck wants that, right? No, let's put some blinds in there. So um, blinds can make a huge, huge difference. Um, so let's see, removing heavy, old, out, outdated balances and curtains, installing blinds when necessary. And then lastly, I would say to carpet, like I know it's a pain in the butt to change your carpet out, but dirty carpet is absolutely gross and disgusting. Nobody likes dirty carpet. No one wants to see dirty carpet. And even if a buyer is, you know, planning on replacing the, with hardwood or other kind of carpet, no one wants to walk into a room with dirty carpet. So I would say have it cleaned. I've got a great guy and I'm sure there's others, you know, wonderful uh, professional carpet cleaners. Professional is much different than I, we own one of those little steam cleaners. It's not the same. Uh, a professional has professional grade uh, equipment and professional strength chemicals that they can clean the carpet with. So carpet has to be cleaned. And if you can't clean it, then you got to replace it. I'm sorry, don't kill me. You have to replace it. And there's lots of inexpensive um, alternatives now or, or you know, options for, for carpet replacement. Sometimes you can keep the pad if it's in a really good shape. So that's a really good way to save some money. You, you keep the carpet pad and then you just put brand new carpet on top of it. But it has to be in good shape. Uh, so I would go, my favorite carpet colors, honestly, are just a neutral dark gray. I know the creams and the whites are in, but those tend to get dirty really fast. And the last thing I want you to do is replace your carpet and then have it trashed by your kids or your dogs or showings, you know, within a week. So just go like with a neutral dark gray color, uh, something, you know, uh, that, that won't show the dirt and, and will last a little bit longer. And buyers will really just be very appreciative of that. Um, and then if, you know, one other thing I would say is hardware, like handles, door handles, uh, hardware on cabinets can be replaced super easily. And that will make a big difference in upping the game. Um, right now we're seeing a lot of golds, uh, you know, gold handles and fixtures, and that would be great, but it's more of like a brushed gold, not a shiny gold, like was in shiny gold was in, in the early nine, you know, early 2000s. Sorry. I'm dating myself now. Not in the nineties. I wasn't, I was not in real estate in the nineties in, the, in the early 2000s. Um, the gold, you know, shiny gold, not good. So we want, we want brushed gold, chrome, um, and, and, uh, so I would say you can get some really, and my favorite place to buy the hardware is honestly Amazon. I, I, I like the big box. I like Home Depot and Lowe's and all of that, but Amazon, you can get an overstock Amazon and overstock. I have found have the least expensive hardware and handles. You can buy a pack of 30 literally for like a hundred bucks. Whereas if you go to the Lowe's or Home Depot, sometimes it's like $5 each. So it's a lot less expensive. I have found to buy those things online and then you can buy lots of them and then return them if you need, you know, if, if they don't work for you. Um, and then as from a, a design perspective, I would say neutralizing. And then, you know, if your agent has a stager that they work in, you know, everything is neutral and, and plain and blah, of course, you know, yeah, that's not always so fun. So add pops of color with pillows or accessories or plants, but pillows are a great way to add a pop of color. Um, and inexpensive. I don't even buy pillows anymore. I buy the um, the pillow uh, uh, covers. So I go on Amazon, I find pillow covers that I really like because I have a hundred pillows in my house and I'll get them and update them with 
uh, grays or, or, or neutrals or now, you know, everything is sort of natural and seagrass and, and the, the fluffy pillows are in and things like that. So if you have some pillows, you can get some really inexpensive pillow covers on Amazon that will make all the difference in the world. Um, so that that's really helpful too. But I would I would leave that maybe to a stager or or and or a professional or an, uh, you know your agent possibly, um, because what what happens is when they take pictures, if everything's every shade of gray like my house, your eye isn't drawn. It doesn't your eye doesn't get drawn into the photograph if there's not something for it to look at way off into the distance like a pop of color, a plant, a pillow, something like that. I like white accessories too. I think those can be really pretty. Um, so I think that's it for now. I feel like I've just been rambling, but I would say paint is huge. Um, you know, s s small, inexpensive home improvement projects, uh, like light fixtures, removing heavy, outdated curtains, possibly putting in mini blinds or blinds, honeycomb blinds. If you have a, a something, um, that's, it's not such a great view, uh, that you're looking at something that's not so pleasant and decluttering and depersonalizing huge uh makes a huge difference i will lastly i will finish this by you gotta make sure your house is clean like q-tip clean eating off the floor clean i don't want to see hair i don't want to see dog hair human hair dust nothing it has to be clean so it is worth it to invest in a cleaning service because you can do all of these other things and make your house beautiful, but if it's dirty, and believe me, my house gets damn dirty in three days after my cleaning people are there because, I, like I said, I have four kids. There's six of us, two dogs. We now have a turtle. I mean, it, <laughs> house is a disaster. Um, so, But having it clean is one of the biggest things that you can do and the least expensive thing to get your home sold fast. So I hope this is helpful to everyone. You can feel free to send me any comments. Uh, with further questions and um, I always get people that are text me and send me things like hey Victoria this is my girlfriend's staircase what color would you paint her trim and I'm usually pretty good about returning an answer fairly quickly on things like that uh, so if you have any questions hi Celia oh my favorite stager Celia Parrott is here from Feathered Homes as I was saying she's awesome and always gives me lots of good tips and colors her favorite colors and whatnot um, so, uh, so it was nice seeing everybody. Thank you all for joining and please feel free to put any comments below with questions on how to maximize your return on investment when getting ready to sell your house. Take care and I'll talk to you soon.